Uh, you must all be hungry for the gifts of the Spirit. Yes. Isn't that true? And uh, if I may just share something about that, only five minutes? Is that all right? Please. Then I will move on to the next uh, thing. Um, of course, in 1 Corinthians 12, we read about the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, let me quickly turn to it. Now concerning the spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away by these dumb idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one says, can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. These are diversities of gifts by the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Now, I'm, I, 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 I'm not going to try to give you a lengthy explanations of the different gifts. I just would like to, to share with you who have such interest in it, uh, how I have come to view the gifts of the Spirit in my ministry. And I believe that is actually valid for all of us. Now, number one, the gifts of the Spirit are not medals of honor to be worn on Sunday morning at church. They are no merits at all. They are gifts. If you had to work for them, it, they wouldn't be gifts, but they are gifts. I remember when I was a young man in, 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 in the church of my father at that time, we were always saying, he's got three gifts, and he has four, and our pastor has eight. <laughs> wow, that was not quite the ultimate, but almost the ultimate. Should have been nine. They were like medals of honor. We were awed by them. And then when I was in Africa, I realized one thing. The gifts of the Spirit are not medals of honor. They are tools for the job. Yeah. They are tools. Tools for different jobs. You need a hammer when you need a hammer. But you need a saw when you need a saw. And pliers when you need pliers. And the different tools can do different jobs. That is important. And this is how I see the gifts of the Spirit. It's not that I have to possess all nine at all. When God gives me a job to do and I report for work in the morning at his gate, he will give me exactly the appropriate tool for the job he wants to have done. 
Today it may be to heal the sick. Tomorrow it may be to raise the dead. Or the next day I would need discernment of spirits. He will give me the tool. Not to possess it. But to use it. And he will always give it at the right time. The right gift for the right job. How do you like that? And if you follow this picture, many, many things will fall into place. I don't need to have all nine tools in waiting. I get the right one when I need it. I have the right one. I can cast out devils when there are devils to be cast out in the name of Jesus. The fact is to me, if you ask me, many are casting devils out where there are no devils. <laughs> and that's why they have such a low success rate. <laughs> if the devil is somewhere, you can smell him from far. You will know there is a devil and not try to talk people into it. May God help us. May God help us. Say amen. amen. The power set up. How is the power set up? That's the way I have come to realize and learn in the school of the Holy Spirit. They are on my platform in Africa. I'm an evangelist, just an evangelist. I'm not a professor of theology. So don't expect too much. I know how the Holy Spirit works because I see him working I see him working when the whole when we get the power of the Holy Spirit let's say the baptism of the Holy Spirit he's not he's not going to give you a tank full that you carry on your back loaded with power no there's a thankful, be thankful. No, no, no. That's not what it is. What did he say in John 15? He said, I am the vine. You are the branches. You are the branches. We must abide in him. We must remain connected with him. And as we remain connected with him, there will be a flow of life and of power, non-stop, day and night, moment by moment. We don't own the power. Jesus said, all power is given unto me. Because he has all power. And we are connected with him. We are not a reservoir. We are more a faucet. We don't own the power. We just let it pass through. Say amen. amen. The, the whole secret is to remain connected. Amen. Moment by moment, moment by moment, moment by moment. Don't forget that. Because if you get a big tankful, it may leak, it may evaporate, it may get finished. But if we are like the branch on the vine, we will live as long as the branch lives. We have eternal life of the quality of Zoe. The Zoe quality, the divine quality. That's why the Bible calls it life abundantly. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It was such a relief to me when I realized 
that I'm not a power reservoir. I'm just a faucet. I just release it. I don't own it. I just release it. A faucet doesn't own the water. It just releases the water. And that is so true of the power of God. And the gifts of the Spirit, as I said already, they are tools for the job. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Glory to God. And then we say, these are men of great power. Look at them. My goodness. They heal the sick. They cast out devils. It's all automatic. How can that be? And I struggle so much. 